So the, so the other picture was a picture of the thieves. And here am I with my sister Sally <coughs> waiting for the boat to come in on the ferry we were going to take. It was just so exciting driving up country. Just so exciting. Now it looks as if, I'll go back the other way. What's the reservoir? What is it? It's got three or four years. It's, uh, I think it's Pierce Reservoir. Yeah, lower Pierce now. Pierce. 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 Yeah, I, I think it says that Pierce, yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah. Pierce is P E I L C. Okay. No. Okay. How is it you know about that? Now, just you remember. So this is Dad, right? It's my father, I, as an artist, so. You can tell with my silly uh, accents and so on that one of the things that I do, I do voice acting. I do little voices for cartoons sometimes. I Awesome. And I think it's because I was exposed to so many sounds of language when I was a kid and I was a good mimic that I picked it up. So I'm an artist, part of me as an artist. So with my artist's eye, you can see how he's composed the shot. See how he's beautifully composed it? He's got the family off to one side. It's a little hint. He's in mainly darkness, but he's able to get this lit naturally. I just find it a very spectacular shot for an amateur. Remembering that he only got the chance to see how well or how badly he took a photograph two weeks later. So if it was overexposed, he had to think back, how was the settings on my camera two weeks ago to be able to improve it? And someone is going to ask me the make and age of the camera to be used. I want to say a Leica, but I do not know. It wasn't a single lens reflex. I, I don't remember. I mean, I just... Was he using Kodachrome? Because they lasted very well. The color generally was much better. Yes, I think they were. 
There are many that were sunk, and uh, there's actually a boat graveyard. Yeah. The China building, yes, OCBC, China building, yeah. Where where the new OCBC the calculator is standing today. One of the most interesting things. One of the most interesting things for me, posting pictures on you know, Street in Singapore or um, uh, Heritage Malaysia, is that <clears throat> I can just put up one picture and ask a question, <laughs> and then a hundred different people <laughs> will know the specific answer. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Quite, That's it's it's very absolutely fun. <laughs> Which is why when I, I wrote a little essay up for you before I came. Because, you know, I thought about this quite a bit, as you can probably imagine, and it's a big deal to realize I was, I was curating Dad's pictures, although they were just in the basement as far as I was concerned. Now to put them in professional hands, to be curate, curated, um, and of course we, we write a lot to think about, about the word heritage, but I began to realize that it really 
it really isn't a word, it really isn't a noun, it's what we do is heritaging, right? because it makes no sense. Once none of us can ever remember the pictures and they're just pictures, then they become fusty pictures that will go in a book and yeah. someone will say in years to come, oh, how interesting that picture is. No one will know what it is. Yeah. But the fact is, because so many of us are still alive, then we can talk about it. It becomes yes. a light against a verb. But your father labeled things. He That's did. so important. It yeah. is. Yeah, I realized that. Yeah. I realized that. I, could, I do not have the patience that my dad had. You've got to remember, my, we had a Vauxhall Crestor. I don't know if you've seen one of the pictures yeah. of it. My father could tell you to the tenth of a gallon what the miles per hour was. Why? Because he had a log book, and every time he would log every gallon, so we did how many miles he went on the odometer and uh, how much the oil changed. So he was just had that kind of very punctilious, very precise. And what, right. what did he do in GHQ? Say again? What did he do in GHQ? He, he was, um, he was a, a radio operator. He was a, he was a and uh, uh, he was a singer. So dad, dad was a singer, and I think it's because of his singing training he became a good, good detective. He was a good radio So Singapore River, um, generic shot. I hate that. Why is that doing? Hang on, I'm going to try this. Way. Where's that? It's in your I know. Where's it taken from? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> from the From the. It's that hill that has this strange tower like the, structure yeah. that, uh, that we see from, from over the other side, right? Yeah. Isn't that yeah. funny? How many of us? I was like, <laughs> 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 I always like that shot. It's just as funny. <laughs> Typically, two hours oh, wait there. <laughs> okay, so this is heritage and heritage, right? This, for me, as a kid, is the junction between what I think of as old Singapore and new Singapore, right? It's a very defining moment that took the whole of the family to it. I can still remember it, right? I still remember it. I remember being hugely impressed by the engineers who had designed a small ro uh, remote control um, uh, port of what your port was going to become like. The automation that would be used in the future to be able to manage one of the most important resources you've got, which is your plus side and your minus side. The plus side is you're a hugely strategically important port city on the planet. The downside is you're important strategically on the planet. I call Singapore as a number of places in the world. I'll talk a little bit about my background now uh, in, a, in a moment. Uh, Singapore is what's called a trim tab country. You ever heard the word before, trim tab? Mm -hmm. Trim tab, when you have a large, um, if you have a very large ship, and the ship has a, a very big um, rudder. But it's impossible to turn the rudder by itself because it's too big and it's too heavy and there's too much pressure. What they do is they put a tiny little extra piece on the, on the end. It's called a trim tab. And the trim tab turns the opposite way that you want the rudder to go. It's a little rudder. And if you and it, it just turned it as this huge mechanical advantage. And it's the trim tab that turns the rudder. You with me? Mm -hmm. So it is a very small thing that has huge leverage. And from my perspective, Singapore is a trim tab country. It's very small, you have huge leverage. I never want you to forget that. Right? That's my party political. And so, well it is, you know, because you know, as a kid, I recognized what my father was doing. He was showing me what Singapore would likely become. And there was a very clear demarcation. And this uh, affected me hugely. How many of you went to it? How many of you went to the Singapore Exposition? Well, was downtown. I wasn't born. 
Yeah, I want to say one. Give us a minute. Sorry. I'm three. Just two. So. A lot of us were too young. <laughs> so, what, so the, I think that to, you got to remember these these slides were expensive. My, I don't want to say my father was stingy. Um, I would like to say he was parsimonious. Do you know the word parsimonious? Yes. Frugal. Yeah. Well, frugal. He's very frugal, right? So if he didn't have to take a photograph, he didn't take a photograph. I think he took 15 photographs of the exposition, and I think I've displayed almost all of them on Little Street and Secret Wars. So it's hugely, hugely symbolic for me, and, and I, I, I could tell as a kid that this is important because it just showed what the thinking was of Singapore to come. A number of you uh, have asked me who would I like to visit while I'm out here. One of the groups I'd like to visit before I, I go home is your city planning group that is the world leader in the use of 3D modeling of cityscapes using the most advanced software in the world. This thinking that happened obviously prior to the Singapore Exposition, they must have been thinking about this before the event came, continues on to this day. And so I, I you know, I just like you to know that, right? You guys are using some of the most advanced city planning uh, methods and techniques in the world today. You are world leaders in that field. And I think that's symbolic of it. Any questions about that? You don't have a, a visit to the URA link yet? I don't have it, no. Oh, it's coming. Let me no. see what I can do. Okay. Because I would like to see them, and I'd like them to see this. And by the way, if you can make a 3D visualization of the future, <coughs> You can also make it with the parts. Yes. yes. You've got enough pictures and photographs and stuff and bits and pieces to be able to create what's called an instantiation of 1957. Oh. Challenge well, we, we need the initiative to do that. Uh, and I don't know if we do no, no, at no, this no, point no, in time. The museum does have small little corners where they do treat models yes yeah, uh, small bits, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. That, again that bits and pieces I did I did actually uh, write once on a little street in Singapore asking if we could in some way since there's so many of us right contribute in one way or another you know the reconstruction of Orchard Road oh right? I love it yeah but I mean it's through uh, uh, I mean but somebody has to take the lead in flushing it out right yes. and the others can help and contribute yes. By providing descriptions, names, right, right, right. you know, yes. uh, uh, I mean, my background is as an urban planner and an architect, right? Yes. And one of the things that I did back then was, uh, or one of the things that I was made to study was also the reconstruction of uh, the urban scape of Venice from 1450 to 1550, and all completely using descriptions of rents. You know, yes. things like we pay so much for such a size and it's located right next door to the bakery and so on and so on. And from things like that, you could literally Absolutely. recreate Absolutely. Right, the physical Absolutely. aspect Absolutely. of that place. Absolutely. And we could do the same with Portugal. You can. Yeah. The pa Paris has been reconstructed from 3,500 years ago mm. to now yeah. using 3D modeling mm. tools and the descriptions of what they know archaeologic archaeologically right to the time that the Vikings came up and invaded Paris. Um, all the way up to today, all of that epoch. So that's very possible. Very is possible. Calvin, Calvin should be here. But do you think URA? Do you think URA is really interesting? Well, uh, before that, no, no URA. I'm not saying URA, but yeah. Kelvin, right, who yeah. happens to work with URA, yeah, yeah, but he has he's a constrained. personal interest in conservation. Yeah, and he's constrained by his job. He's constrained by. Well, he could advise us on what is possible and what is not so possible, right? But, but the fact remains, right, if we have one person interested in that, right, we can still find the resources. Yes, do something about yes. this. Within or from without, right? Yeah. That's a separate matter. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes, I agree with you. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I actually did move to that point a couple of times saying, you don't have to bellyache and you've lost the Kampong day and feel. You can reconstruct. I believe you can reconstruct it. Not to pretend that you like the open latrines. Not that you like the fact that the, the 
sense, the conditions were not particularly lovely, mm -hmm. but that there is a feel. I think when we talk about Kampong, we're talking about a certain feel yes. that those of us felt it can still feel it today. So exactly. that's the thing, right? The thing is the feeling. Yeah. And and anyway, I've, I've said enough about it. This is this is my take. Yes, Every year, RAF Salita would throw the Salita open and they would have a fate. And thousands of people would show up. Thousands of people would show up. There you can see that's a huge cross section of Singapore society coming to the RAF Salita in its open day. I've got more of these pictures, by the way. You would see huge cross section, not just the upper crust, not just the English. But right across the board, everyone would come. Ice cream, candy, food, games, the whole lot. It's a very, very fun time. Did you ever go? Did you ever go to it? Did anyone else apart from me go to the RAF thing? Yeah, I never heard about where it was located. Is it near the Sita Airbase area? In the in the, in the airbase. So it's actually in the airbase It's actually area. in the airbase. And I think it's in the big field on the right hand side as you go through the gate. I think, you know, there's a great big gate. Right. I can't quite remember. Not really. I can't quite catch exactly where it is, but it was inside. One thing that's very interesting about pictures of the 50s is compared to the 80s, how modern they look. Look at the guy's t shirt. It could be today. That's true. The haircuts. That's <laughs> retro. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look dated. It's very true, isn't it? It's very true. I think what I like is the fact the colour's still good. Can you see yeah. that? I mean, this is whatever it was that we were taking. I mean, that picture could be taken yesterday. Really good. Really good. It's a lovely picture. I love it. I love its composition of groups. Clear for your bothering us. You, you've got a ton of pictures that we all like to see. Will you be able to go a wee bit faster so we can see? Okay, standard. You know, must have been to Singapore, must take this picture. The tallest building in Southeast Asia. <laughs> It's the Asia Insurance Building. Yeah. At one time was Cathay Building, I was the tallest calling to my dad. Yeah, yeah, at one, when, when it was built, yeah. So that, that came up in the 50s. Hell. Oh, no, hell. Yeah. Seen that one. Who's that? Did the lady scolded you? Who's that? The lady scolded you. That's Eng Ah Ah. And um, uh, I'll never forget, Eng invited us to her house. And someone was saying how the houses were modest and they were wrapped up. And it's not a very beautiful house. We went and we had Chinese New Year dinner there. She must have served us in excess of 15 courses, and I think I managed to get through three. <laughs> my father about six, my brother got through all of them. <laughs> I've got a feeling that these are the only pictures I need to, oh no, oh, okay. I'm share with yeah, okay. Okay. Where's that? <laughs> well, yeah, that's all. Like that's all. That's all country in Malaya. And it, is it Quantum? Yes, Quantum. Okay. So there you go. I mean, beautiful, beautiful. That's what. Is this what they call a jump? No, 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 no. no, no, no. It's not a jump. No, a jump. Yeah. No, a jump. Jump, 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 jump. Oh, it might be. I didn't play it. No, no. We've got one up here in the Buddhist boats, and that was a lot of fun as well. Same as what's going to be. No.
scale. What's the big thing that no, you notice about that picture? Ford Tech's truck. <laughs> Albion. The next you're, able to, you're able to be busier than you know the streets of Singapore. <laughs> No, no, it's the uh, it's the government building. The yeah. yeah. One of my favorite, 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 favorite. No. What's that? Kilo. Kilo. What do you do with it? What a simple piece of technology. People lived on it, right? Yeah. Cooked on it, lived on it, cooked yeah. on it, the whole deal. I was just absolutely fascinated. Do these exist anymore? Could you rebuild one as an artifact to show people how people used to live? That's the point. It's the skills involved in those things. That's right. It's not the trivial thing. I don't think the PSA would let you do that. You don't like people building things all over the world. Yeah, yeah, mostly. We'll take the last one. Do you want to see So the government wouldn't allow it. Oh, I see. Well, I, we, 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 Funeral. Funeral. What were the funerals like when you were a kid? What were the funerals like? Noisy. Noisy. Yes. Noisy. all the No, I know, but these were. They shut down the whole street, right? <laughs> I, I would say this to my dad. He insisted that all of us were familiar with all of the religions and be respectful of all of them and to know about all of them. So um, he has pictures, obviously, of, of the mosque. And I Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still remember going in there. Terrified. See Mariamas. With the sepoy soldiers still there. Right? There's the causeway from another shot. There's the causeway going into Malaya. Yep. Guess how long it took to get, 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 guess how long it took to get through the customs immigration at, uh, A minute. Yes, just a minute. That was when it was still a colony. Yes, it's true. Not separate countries. It, it was just customs then. Yeah. So this, oh. how many of you know the name of this type of area? Yeah, yeah. Like the the short Sunderlands. Sunderlands. Yeah. Sunderland. Yeah. Sunderland. The street where you see the Sunderland. Sunderland. Mm. So, yeah. I love the Sunderlands because, so here's the Sunderland. It's, it's being launched from RAF Salita. Um, it's, it's going... The, the, the jetty is here, but they, they, they'd just be about to launch it. Um, I can't describe, so they would fly over the primary school. I went to Salita, RAF Salita Primary School, and there is, how many of you ever heard a Sunderland fly overhead at about 50 feet? Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, the school was made of um, wood and atta, right? A primary school, right? <laughs> like, but, yeah, it was just amazing. So the thing that, that I particularly liked about the Sunderland is that they were scrapped on RAF Suita. And they were left in a field, and the pieces were cannibalized. Ask yourself the question, in those days, were those airplane hulks supervised? 
Could you climb in them? Yes. Could you pretend to be flying on a sortie? <laughs> Could you get in the back and pretend you had the machine gun? <laughs> Could you go down on the bottom and pretend you were doing the bombing? <laughs> Could you? Could you be the pilot? You could do all of those things. <laughs> do you remember them? Yeah. Amazing thing. RAF sleep. Nowadays you probably get shot. <laughs> probably. <laughs> that is Holden Court. It is under a highway now. It's just on the outskirts of um, of uh, Kayu and sort of halfway between Kayu and the, the main gate to Salita. It's no longer there. Any idea? What's the name? 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 What's not too far away from where yes. it yeah. have to be. Yes. Yes. So this would be serving the ships, right? Yeah. 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 Well, we got some ice too. I don't know. Did everyone get ice? I remember we would get ice in the gym. probably got from time to time. Big blocks here. Yeah. Nice. It is to be similar. I saw that. And, and they used to wrap it with a gunny yeah. side, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Fridges, we, we don't, I didn't put a picture up here, but someone said it's nice to see the pictures of, of what life was like. Um, it's just because of the technical issues I've got here. They're, most of them are already on Little Street in Singapore. You know, um, me as a six year old being fed beans on toast with my two sisters and my mum, you see what the kitchen would have been like. The fridge was amazing. I had never seen a refrigerator before. Um, I, I was just fascinated with it. And the thing about the refrigerator as a kid is, a little six-year-old kid, is you could open the door just a little bit and put your nose up to it. <laughs> <laughs> you get that nice yeah. <laughs> You're almost to do that. <laughs> Where's this? The closest is the Where's that? Right. Where's the best cars in the world? Just have to say. I think I have done this set, guys. Yeah. What time is it? It's a quarter to four. So you have about 15 minutes to wrap up. Okay. I think you've seen all of the ones that I've put up. Um, you wouldn't be able to see if I put my, my computer here. And this is unfortunate. This. <laughs> Don't do that. being picked up. These are kids, the, the garbage guys sitting on the back <laughs> of the truck <laughs> as it gets going down the road. That's a sh shot in the layer. There's the boats. Very can you see it that far back or is it too far back? No, very dark. Can't really see it. I don't want to cool. Another time I promise to come back to this. Singapore and show you the rest. Lots of them, loads and loads and loads. See how we end on it. Oh, this is a fun one. Oh, I lost it. So actually, 
Pictures. I know some of you are interested in the military part, some of you are interested in Salita in particular, so I'm happy to, you know, happy to send you the scanned shots that I've got. Yeah, um, in a way, how is it going to be organized in, you know, if, if you wanted uh, like military shots or specific areas, is it organized for you guys, or you already have your own kind of catalog? All right. Could, okay, you know, now this is, this is an interesting question. Yeah. You mentioned, I mentioned my father's quite parsimonious. Space in those days was a huge consideration. And the 35 millimeter slides, relatively speaking, were quite big. So to keep things in chronological order, bearing in mind that so humid here that dad lost a lot of his pictures to mold, he would save spaces in the film. mixed in with Canton. <laughs> so in a way they're a jungle uh, in, in terms of order of which they will be shown. So you're going to have to do your own sleuthing. Go in. I think your father did a fantastic job in the way he dated it and actually uh, cataloged it. It actually has a lot of research in what he did. Yeah, he, a lot of people have in the research in business has said that that act alone has made the like, so 10 times more value. Yeah. Because then they have random pictures of Chinese people doing things. Now it's... You know, Your program made him start up for like... Okay, so we have to yeah. close up. They did a great job. Yeah, he did. Yeah, you... Uh, I, yeah, very good. Did he do a lot more collections? Well, what, what has happened was... Um, uh, we had to move. This time last year, we had to move. And we had to just get rid of a lot of stuff. And so what I did was, once Alvin Tan said, yes, I will take them, I said, I'm going to send them to you. Love no. <laughs> And I did want to be an actor. As a kid, I wanted to be an actor. You can't tell that now. But I was born with a horrendous case of eczema or eczema or atopic dermatitis, 65% covered. When I lived in Singapore, it was in abeyance because of the sunshine. Yeah. Nobody knew. We just Clifford was better than Singapore. We went back to Northern Ireland from 59 to 65, and it all flared up, became more horrendous. From, um, from 65, then we moved back to Cheltenham, moved back to England, and it, it, England is called Blighty for a reason. I like it. England is called light, right? It's always gray, it's always rainy, and you know the odd American who goes there and gets some nice weather. Oh, wow, it was really pretty nice. You were lucky. Right? And so I couldn't do theater because I was allergic to the stage maker. So I took electrical engineering. So I'm in electrical engineering, my first training. But I always wanted to get rid of the eczema. And when I finished my undergraduate in engineering, I, I, I was invited by my company, the Tunbridge Sharecraft Corporation, to, to take a master, pay for a master's in a related field to engineering. I took applied psych. So I'm an applied psychologist. And by being, by taking my training in applied psychology, realizing I'm wanting to get better, getting closer to people, getting closer to the theater, I learned how to put electroencephalography, EEG caps, on me. And now I put two and two together, and now I can see how information flows within healthy and unhealthy circuits. And the brain is made up of thousands and thousands of circuits. Are you with me? And there I took a PhD in cybernetics, which is the study of large, complex, messy systems. 
is keeping that whole tradition of the multidisciplinary. If Singapore told me anything, it's be a multidisciplinarist, be a multiculturalist. I don't get stuck in one little channel. Along the way, I studied uh, a lot of yoga. So those of you who know about Raj Yoga, Pranayama Yoga, I've been doing that for 50 years, again, to clear my skin up. And along the way, I, I, I got the chance to work with an extremely amazing guy who taught me de-hypnosis. How do you de-hypnotize yourself with things you do? And along the way, not just a pretty face. Not just a pretty face. I suppose So now what I do is I teach people how to use neuroplasticity, the plastic ability of the brain, to rewire itself. If you're interested in that, my cards are up here. Those of you are interested in how I have continued. And I, honestly, I put it down to the three years in Singapore was like, taking you out of the box. Because I'll tell you, it is impossible to get back into the British way of thinking of know your place and get back into the box once you've been outside the box. So thank you all for listening. Thank you all for coming. I'm very